Home loans denied, their credit crashed. Yes, and a Wisconsin couple had no idea why it was all happening, but the federal government did. But it's why the IRS said nothing that has a Princeton couple on a mission to change federal law. Fox's Brian Polson shows us why the feds kept it a secret for nearly a decade. Nearly two hours northwest of Milwaukee, the tiny community of Princeton, population 1214, is the kind of place where people go to get away from big city problems. But identity theft is a crime that knows no bounds. This is a crime where our federal government, if somebody's using your social security number, it's okay. And if you're looking for something, Bob builds these chicken nesters. A few days a week, Debbie Ginterberg runs an antique furniture store. But for the past six years, she spent countless additional hours trying to repair the damage caused by two men who took the key to her husband's identity, his social security number. Thank God I got her to do this because there's no way I could have gathered all this information. Robert Ginterberg doesn't say much. On the mouth, no. <laughs> but make no mistake, he's angry about all the trouble it's caused. A half-built house on the couple's Green County lot stands as a testament to the home loan that was inexplicably denied. Then there were the mysterious credit card bills and a line of credit for a new Ford truck. You can't get one because the social was already used, but they don't tell you that. They just deny you the loan, and then you're like, what? None of it made any sense until... In March of 07, I got this phone call. A bill collector finally told the Ginterbergs that two men in the Chicago area were using Robert's social security number. In fact, Cornelio Suarez had been using it since at least 1999 when he bought a house near Cicero. He bought another one in Franklin Park in 2003 and a third home in Addison in 2005. He also used the number to secure credit for a Ford Expedition, a Ford Explorer, and a Ford E-150 van. And the Ginterbergs say both Suarez and another man used Robert's social to get credit cards, insurance coverage, driver's licenses, cell phones, and medical care. But that's not what upsets them the most. Our federal agencies have known for years that this is going on. Both the IRS and Social Security Administration have known since at least 2001 that Cornelio Suarez and Enrique Jimenez were earning income using an invalid Social Security number. But they never told the rightful owner, Robert Ginterberg, because tax records in the United States are private, even the tax records of an identity thief. This country that the criminal has privacy rights. I can't think of another crime. I can't. I tried. I, you know, I laid in bed last night tossing and turning, thinking of any other criminal activity, would you get such privacy and protection? No, no, you don't. So Debbie had to investigate on her own. She won't say how, but she obtained hundreds of pages of financial information about the men using her husband's personal information, including records from the IRS master file, a fact that earned her a phone call from the White House. They said that I was guilty of two felonies. I violated these two men's U.S. privacy rights. That's right. The feds were threatening to charge her. I was adamant. I said, do it. Charge me. I don't care. You know, that ought to get on national news. We're trying to get on national news. It's like you want the whole nation to know this is happening. This isn't happening in Wisconsin. This is happening everywhere. Debbie never was charged, and in 2007, she finally convinced prosecutors in Illinois to go after Cornelio Suarez. He was indicted for identity theft convicted and sentenced to six years in prison. But the decision was reversed in 2011 because the state couldn't prove Suarez knew the social security number he was using belonged to a real person. He was vindicated and set free. We have it in here. Now he's free. He didn't go far. After Suarez was released from prison, the Ginterbergs lost track of him. But we found him right here in Maywood, Illinois, a suburb of Chicago. You used his social security number to buy cars and houses and get jobs, and he's was, been dealing with this for years. No, no, and that's that's not a bad. I use him for work for just to give it like um, bring that uh, food to my family. Suarez says he only used Robert Ginterberg's social security number, not his name. I use my name. I know you say his name and everything, but I mean, I was like, um, I was paying my bills. I pay my bills. I didn't do like, like, like regular people do. I don't do bad things to nobody. In other words, Suarez doesn't think he did anything wrong. Can I ask, how are you able to work now? 
Are they able to work now? I I have a permit to work. Do, what? But do you have? A, are you using a social security number now? Uh, my. Do, do you have your own social security number? I Look. can't talk about. It. I had to. You want to talk? Do you talk to my lawyer? I don't care if if what reason an individual has if they're poor if they're you know. They want a better life. I don't care. This is wrong. Wisconsin Congressman Tom Petry agrees. The Ginderbergs uh, suffered an injustice. It ought to be corrected. In February, he introduced a bill that would require the IRS to notify taxpayers when someone else is using their Social Security number fraudulently. I guess their first job is collecting taxes, but the, but to say that they can't notify someone when they know that. Uh, uh, someone else is using their social security number. It can't be that complicated. But there is a complicating factor. You might call it the elephant in the room. It's the polarizing issue of illegal immigration. And it's wrong for our federal government to know about it and do nothing about it because they're afraid politically it's going to do some damage. When Petri first introduced his Social Security Identity Defense Act in 2010, it had bipartisan support. He introduced it again in 2011, again with a pair of Democrats as co-sponsors. This is now his third try, but so far there are just six co-sponsors, all Republicans. Why? You know, like, this is something to help everybody. I don't think it is a particularly partisan issue. Republicans and Democrats all have Social Security numbers. Another Republican, U.S. Senator Ron Johnson, agreed to meet with the Ginnerbergs last month. Good morning, how are you doing? Yeah, Good morning. Nice to meet you. Me too. Hey, Bob. After a 30-minute closed-door meeting, the senator can be heard offering his opinion. That's <laughs> ridiculous. This is over. But the Ginnerbergs know if they truly want to see change in Washington, there's a long road still ahead of them. I don't care. You know, this is wrong. This is absolutely wrong. Now, the IRS maintains that it cannot tell you who is using your Social Security number or how, but it can tell taxpayers simply that someone has fraudulently used their Social Security number. In 2008, the IRS created a new program to flag individual taxpayers who are victims of identity theft and send them notification letters. However, a 2011 audit found the IRS was still failing to notify most identity theft victims. Since 2011, the IRS says it has improved its notification process and has doubled the number of employees working identity theft cases.